with me, so I'll just uh, okay. And we're, we're all set. Go ahead, Risha. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, CA Testing to <coughs> Community Webcast. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Before we get started with our demo today, I would just like to uh, introduce a couple of folks. Uh, myself, uh, Richa Navani, I'm a senior software en engineer uh, on the testing tools team. And um, I'm not sure if we have Mike uh, with us today, so I'll just move forward with the InterTest team. Uh, we have Scott Davidson with us, uh, the architect for InterTest. Uh, hello, Scott. Hello. And uh, we have uh, here with us um, Munish Kumar, who will be presenting today. He's a software engineer on the InterTest team. Uh, hello, Munish. Hi, Richard. So without spending uh, too much time on this, uh, I'll just pass it on to Manish to take over. Thank you, Richard. Uh, let's skip over a few slides here. So uh, today we'd like to uh, give a brief introduction and an overall explanation of, of the different um, panels that we have available to us within the InterTest Eclipse UI. So without further ado, we'll get started. Okay, um, there's a slight technical difficulty here. Um, my animation is not working as I thought, so I'll just point to the arrows out loud. Um, okay, so to start things off, we'll start to explore the CA Intertest Eclipse UI default perspective. So when you install the Eclipse UI for Intertest as a standalone application or you're running it as a plugin, within your existing Eclipse workbench and you switch over to the Intertest UI, this is the default perspective you're presented with and this can of course be configured. Um, so <clears throat> in the middle of the screen uh, towards the left is the Intertest debug panel which contains a batch or kicks user defined project to which we can add programs later on and debug them. Okay, uh, right next to that in the middle of the screen is uh, a lister view and this is the area that we, which will get populated with the source code that we're trying to debug. Right next to that to the right, uh, the outline view will have a collapsed uh, tree version of our program which will allow us to navigate very quickly through our program and allow us to click anywhere within these nodes and be positioned within our uh, listing. So don't worry, I will get more into details. And right above that, to the left, we have breakpoints. Once we begin debugging, uh, or we're picking up a debugging session that was started off by another user, and we want to set breakpoints to see where they're set, what kind of breakpoints they are, that's the view where those will, that information will be available to us. Okay. To the right of that, we have the watch data and the auto data panel that can be used to explore and change values of variables using our program. And then we at the bottom, we have the servers panel. This is where we get to add new server instances that we can actually use to debug uh, or debug batch jobs on the mainframe or, or CICS transactions. Okay, so moving over to the next slide. So here, I'll demonstrate how the user can go ahead and add a new server. On the server view on the bottom of the screen, there's an add new server button, which once clicked, you're presented with the new server connection wizard. And simply, the user now has to fill out a host name. Sorry. The user simply has to fill out the host name, the, the port number, and a user ID and click finish. Once that, once the user has done that, the server now becomes available and the status uh, column indicates that the server indeed is available and then we can start to use it immediately. Okay, once we have done that, it is now time for the user to go ahead and import some source code so that we can actually debug our jobs and we have 
so it's good to go along with it. So on the top toolbar, there's a button that once you hover over, it will read import source code, uh, or import the process files rather, which once clicked, are you presented with the import process files wizard. And it's very intuitive. Basically, you specify a Proxim data set name, click the list members button, and you're presented with all the contents within the Proxim uh, file that you've pointed to. From that point on, you can either do a select all or select individual uh, programs that you would like to import. And optionally, you can set whatever programs that it is you want to import to be monitored. And once you click Finish, You can see on the inner test debug panel on the on the left, under the monitored uh, tab, uh, we have the program that we just imported is being set to as monitored. Once once we have imported the source code, it's now time to go ahead and and configure a debug session, which essentially means I will point to some batch job uh, in in a PDF or a PDS somewhere on the mainframe. Uh, so in order to do that. Click the tiny bug button and within the inner test debug panel on the left. And then you are again presented with the inner test debug settings wizard. On this settings wizards page, uh, you can then go ahead and toggle over to JCL settings tab and specify a converted uh, or JCL that's ready to be submitted in order to debug your uh, program. So here I've already filled that out. And the user can now go ahead and click Submit. And what that will do is go ahead and submit the batch job, and it will then be intercepted. So here you can see within the list review, uh, you are now stopped at the initial intercept within the program that you're debugging. Okay. And the outline view comes in very handy. Uh, so I promised I would show you how to use this earlier. So basically, this is a, a COBOL program, and you can see that the outline view makes it very easy for the user to navigate the program. You can explore your procedure division, data division, working storage, and it allows you to click anywhere within this outline view and then be positioned at the appropriate line uh, within the actual source. Okay, so now I'd like to demonstrate how the user can go ahead and add various types of breakpoints within the program. So within the list review, uh, simply right click next to the line number where you would like to set a breakpoint, then select add breakpoint. And what this does is it will set a unconditional breakpoint which can now be seen on the top left breakpoint view. In addition to the unconditional breakpoints, uh, InterTest provides the users the ability to set conditional breakpoints. So in order to set a conditional breakpoint, simply do the same exact thing you did with the unconditional breakpoint, right click the line number and select configure breakpoint instead of add breakpoint. And the user is now presented with the add line breakpoint wizard, which we can toggle between whether or not this particular uh, breakpoint is going to be unconditional or conditional. If it is going to be conditional, the user can go ahead and set some operands to the left and the right side and select some operator. Uh, so some of the operator values we have are equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, and such. So once you have made those changes, go ahead and click Finish. And we can now see that in the top left breakpoint view, we now have an additional breakpoint, which is conditional. Okay. The outline view also comes in handy uh, to add some variables that we'd like to keep a close watch on. So for this purpose, we have the watch data view. And in order to add any piece of storage or variable uh, to this watch data view, simply right click within the variable on the working storage section or your division section and select add to watch data. Okay, so here I've done that with a few variables, and you can see that those are now available to me within the watch data view. Okay, so there are many other views the InterTest Eclipse UI has to offer, 
some of which are not open by default. So I'd like to demonstrate the statement trace view. In order to get the statement trace view, user simply has to click on the, the window button and toggle over to the show views and select statement trace. And the statement trace view I'll demonstrate in the next few slides uh, is actually a very powerful tool to kind of determine the logic and the flow of your programs. Okay. So we have just opened the trace view and we haven't started debugging yet, so it's blank. Okay, so again, on the inner test debug panel, we can go ahead and click the play button or to resume debugging. And this will start the debugging from our initial intercept. Okay, and as you can see now, uh, is that I have stopped at my first con uh, unconditional breakpoint that I set. Uh, and a few things have changed. Uh, the auto data section is now, uh, view. Uh, the view uh, is now open and I can see the, uh, the variable that's in play on this line and also the statement trace view shows the uh, order of instructions that were executed up to the point where I am in my program. Okay. From that point on, I can go ahead and resume debugging. And what I find is, is that my program has ab ended. So this is an automatic ab end, and it has, is telling me that I did not set any conditional or unconditional breakpoints. This is something that occurred, uh, was an error in my program, and I have automatically stopped here. So I click OK. And this is the line that's the cause of an end within my source. And I can see on the on the auto data view on the top right that the variable is is the value of this variable is not valid. It's not a packed valid number. I can change that using the auto data view or the watch data view. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and resume debugging. And once I resume debugging, I can quickly see that I've successfully finished my program, debugging this program and got a return code zero. So that's all I had for today's presentation. Uh, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for Q&A. Yes, hi everybody. Um, for those of you who are not on the phone, please feel free to use the WebEx chat or Q&A functionality. Um, you can open up the Q&A box by clicking in the upper right hand screen of your screen where you see the question mark. So a uh, great presentation Manish, uh, thank you, that was very informative and uh, anyone have any questions? I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, on November 17th uh, we'll be presenting CA Palmaster Plus plugins in Eclipse. So um, Len will be sending out the invite, so just save the date. No questions so far, just FYI. Oh, here, here's one from, from, from Greg. How will we access elements in a subscripted way? Array, sorry. So yes, yeah, subscript arrays are handled the same way as any regular elements. Uh, you would add that base elements to the to the watch data view, or it would be automatically added to the auto data view, uh, and then you would see the the instance if it was in the auto data view. But if it was in the watch data view itself, you can set what instance of that array you want to see. Um, if it was um, if it was subscript, if it was if it was indexed, you could actually set the index value itself, and that would update the the view based on what the index value was. Thank you, Scott. Ah, yeah, that was Scott. <laughs> Sorry, I should have introduced myself beforehand. <laughs>
Any other questions for Manish? There aren't any in the Q&A box. And just so everybody on the call knows, um, later on today we'll, we'll be posting the replay of this webcast. So if any questions come up later, um, please feel free to ask them in the community, and then we'll, we'll, and we'll be able to get your answers there as well. Thank you. All right. If there aren't any other questions, I, I guess we can we can wrap up. Okay, thanks everyone. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. The leader has disconnected. The conference will be terminated.